um, because we talked about the ecstasy of Rita Joe, we talked about the new scripts coming out of Canada. The theater that happened before that, the Everyman Playhouse, the, uh, the, the Bunty goes to Boopy or whatever that play was, I'm, I need a, the, what I'm getting at is, when did you feel there was a Canadian or original exploration of the theater happening in Vancouver? Doing the plays of Noel Coward is, is you know, doing good Noel Coward and doing it in a Noel Coward way, in a, in a British way. Doing the plays of Eugene O'Neill is doing a great American playwright as great American theater would do it. And these would be Canadian companies being good Noel Coward people or good Eugene O'Neill company. When did the original Pulse say, we want to be ourselves and we will find our own style? I don't know that it happened saying something simple like we want to our own voice. Well, maybe it did. Sydney Risk had, the, the Sydney Risk Every Man That I Belong To was his third company that played in Vancouver and we did Ghosts and we did The Flies and we did... And, but his first company, which was um, Hill and uh, the, man, the man that played in, in, in the Virginia Woolf on Broadway, uh, Arthur Hill, Art, Art Hill, and I um, can't remember the other people, but anyway, they were in his first company, uh, which started here and got as far as Saskatchewan and bogged down in the snow and had to stop. It, they, had a, they had a bus. Uh, the people you know and you've worked with were in that first company. And it was, um, he, he had a Canadian play. He did um, probably uh, uh, Importance of Being Earnest and a Canadian play written by a playwright whose daughter now lives up, up north and uh, was a friend of Sydney's from Banff, and she was one of our first playwrights in British Columbia. But he was determined that when he sent anything out, there would be a Canadian content. So it was because he was Canadian, he wanted a Canadian play, and he had friends who were playwrights, and he wanted their work to be seen. So he did that. Um, I think there's a sort of dichotomy between uh, the Everyman Theatre, the... the um, Totem Theatre, which was very well documented by Thor and Stuart, the people that started it. Which was the Totem Theatre? Totem Theatre is the one that played uh, Weekly Stock, and uh, uh, they lasted two years here, and they used to tour over to Victoria. And where and, did they play in Vancouver? Oh, they played everywhere. They played in the Georgia Auditorium, they played in the what is now... Um, the uh, press club, I think, it's in, it's in the same place as the Queen Elizabeth Theatre downstairs, and they played in the round there. They were the first people to play in the round. They did very exciting things, and they're, what is it, the department that does PR? Uh, the, publicity. Well, no, not publicity. is another word for Marketing. it now. It, it, and it's, it expands and expands. It's the, there's all the theories about how... Anyway, they were fabulous at the publicity. At one point, they had an elephant out front, and there are pictures of that. Now, they were, they were very imaginative, and they were marvelous. They were just two years, and they always claim to be... Thor lived with me here at PAL, lived downstairs from me, and uh, 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 he always claimed that Totem Theatre was the first professional theatre in Vancouver. Actually, Sydney was years before that and had two or three companies, and Thor was... A member of one of those companies, but I was in repertory with with Sydney for the the one year I was with him as an associate director, and uh, he didn't have the PR that the other two had. It, that wasn't part of it. It was all the international uh, repertory, the great plays, the giving uh, the, the giving actors their first opportunities, their first chance. He taught it in Banff and he taught summer school of the theatre here. When, when your company was doing Ibsen, right, in whatever, 1952? Everyman Theatre? Mm. Mm -hmm. 
would the actress be doing Ibsen in 1952 in Vancouver in a style like the British style? A style like the American style? It was Michael Langham who finally said to the Canadian actors at Stratford uh, in, in the late 50s, I don't want to hear a North Atlantic accent, Mid-Atlantic accent. I don't want to hear a pretending... Well, Mid-Atlantic, yes, yes. I want to hear your voices. So we as a community in the 40s and 50s were trying to be Noel Coward British and trying to be Eugene O'Neill American. Mm -hmm. And there was a shift that happened at some point. There's Michael Lang of Stratford. Yes. When did that shift happen here? Maybe well, in my time uh, being on radio, I did an awful lot on radio. No, hundreds of plays on radio. Got all my classical practice on radio. And why not? Radio is marvelous. Uh, it was the time... We had a lot of Brits. That had all that had all worked with Gilgood and had all worked with Olivier, and they were here to give us their best. And some of them are still around. And they all had all dialects, and a lot of the plays on radio were all the various British, Scottish, Irish, Welsh dialects. And I had all those dialects because I learned them from these people. And it was all copy. Yeah, it was all rooted in, in uh, uh, British uh, community theatre, really, which is very good. But we don't do that anymore. Uh, and I don't think it changed till about... It, 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 yeah, the Everyman Theatre, uh, most of uh, uh, Thor's stuff was, was American. Uh, uh, you know, anything from Tennessee Williams to Gordon Wilder, to yeah, you know, Covenant mostly Heart. American, uh, and most of Sydney's would be British because that's where he was trained. Um, I don't think it changed till about the time we started doing our own plays. I don't think it changed till about Rita Jo time, or maybe, maybe Malcolm's time here. I would imagine Malcolm started to say, I want to hear your own voice. I, you must ask him sometime. I think yeah. you're right. I think we're led by the writers. When strong Canadian writers stepped up and were presented, then... We were released. We were released. You can't act in someone else's mold. If you're doing a, yeah. the ecstasy of Rita Joe, you have to find your own templates. So you to have speak. to find, yeah, you have and to Stratford find. And was different because it was all Shakespeare and, and then it took a Michael Langham to say, thank you, I don't want to hear a bit of Latin yes, accent. He I did, I didn't know that. I want to hear you. And it was yes. quite revolutionary at the time. Yes, yes. Because of course to be mid-Atlantic was to speak better. Were you there? Speak, no. With no. Like, did you work with him? Uh, never did. Mm. Had a great conversations with him but never mm. worked. But, and it was strange, it took an Englishman to say Canad to Canadians, use your own voice. Iris Warren, of course, was use your own voice because look, the book that was written by her star student was the natural voice, and so that what did when you work with that? Iris? Yes, worked with uh, Dorothy Somerset. Brought her to UBC. I worked her. I worked as uh, you know. I was the voice teacher until she came, and then I realized I wasn't the voice teacher at all once I knew her. Uh, she was extraordinary. She was wonderful. Bit of a Stengali, perhaps. She had stars all over the world that would call, you know, I've got an opening on Broadway next week. I was with her also at Stratford uh, when um, she was the coach at Stratford. And that would be... Iris was there as the, yes, as the voice coach. And what was her... Yeah. Strength. What was her magic? What was her potion? Use your own voice. To it was it was the natural voice, the natural way to speak, the natural way to, you know, not no rib reserve. Oh God, no! That what's that dreadful thing? Rib reserve breathing. Come oh. on, Joy. Let's I gave you both. I gave you two <laughs> two voice teachers so you could choose between uh, Louis and Iris. Iris comes here and teaches upstairs. And she's still doing rib reserve. That, yeah. And people think it's wonderful because it hurts. You know, can Canadians don't think they're getting anything done unless they're really hurting. <laughs> and it's really hard, <laughs> difficult. <laughs>